Taken for a ride investigation of charter school buses had a huge impact last year, especially when David Hammer found a bus company called Scholars First driving public school children on fake insurance. Yeah, Scholars First lost all of its contracts with charter schools after that, but did the people who ran the company really lose? Tonight, David learned some schools are still being taken for a ride. Local school bus company Scholars First had a string of problems in the 2018-2019 school year. First, a Scholars First driver was caught on camera beating a seven-year-old student. Then another child was left sleeping on a Scholars First bus in a 7th Ward lot. We found dozens of Scholars First buses parked illegally in a muddy field. And finally, we caught Scholars First using falsified insurance documents, and the state insurance commissioner launched an investigation. That's a fraudulent document, a counterfeit document. Nine charter schools reacted by firing Scholars First. But is the company really out of the local school bus market? Documents show Jeremy Jackson owned Scholars First, the company got its required insurance using an agent named Michael Simon, and its operations manager was this man, Hamilton Williams. Last spring, Williams blamed our taken for a ride investigation for costing him his job. Due to the publicity of Mr. David Hammer, I've lost that position and just been hired as a routing consultant. Left without a bus company after last school year, Coghill Elementary School replaced Scholars First with a company called EMS Transportation. But this former Scholars First bus driver says behind the scenes, nothing has really changed. This is what I was told. We're still the same company, we're just under a different name. This driver's employment paperwork is with EMS. But this school year, paychecks are coming from Transline, a company owned by Williams, the former operations manager at Scholars First. Mr. Hamilton, his name is on the checks. Documents show Simon, the insurance agent, owns EMS. And these emails we got through a public records request show that when EMS owner Michael Simon needed information about his own buses and drivers, he turned to Jeremy Jackson, the former owner of Scholars First. Mr. Jackson is calling the shots. Coghill's head of school, Raven Calloway, sent us a statement saying they selected EMS through an open bid process and didn't know about Jackson or Williams' apparent involvement. We are grateful that you have uncovered this possibility as we all have a stake in children's safety, she wrote. The city of New Orleans is trying to get a handle on what's been called the wild, wild west of school buses. It has cited EMS for parking and safety violations on its buses this school year and ordered five buses pulled from service in September. Coghill's public emails show an EMS driver dropped off a four-year-old girl in September without an adult there to pick her up. Simon said the driver was suspended. Coghill also provided Channel 4 with cover sheets of FBI background checks for EMS's 16 drivers, and 13 of them had prior arrests on file. But the school blacked out specifics, including the drivers' names, for privacy reasons. City Safety and Permits Director Zach Smith says the law won't let him reject drivers for permits if they were convicted more than five years ago. And he said he can't do anything about the old Scholars First owner's apparent involvement in EMS. If they are compliant with those laws that, that the city can enforce, then we're going to issue permits. And similarly, the insurance commissioner's office says it has no jurisdiction over Scholars First former owners if they aren't the officially listed owners of EMS. We went to the address EMS lists on all its official paperwork. It's a virtual office in a high-rise downtown, essentially an answering service and mail center. When it was active, Scholars First listed its address at that same virtual office. We also went to EMS's bus lot. It's a casino truck stop. No EMS offices there either. So have you ever met Michael Simon? No. Do you know who he is or where he is? To me, he's a ghost. David Hammer, Eyewitness News. Well, we tried to reach out to Jeremy Jackson and Michael Simon by phone and email several times, and we didn't hear back. Now, David did speak to Hamilton Williams by phone, who said he's trying to, quote, get out of this bus game and has nothing to do with EMS. When David said documents showed his company's employees were handling payroll and other administrative functions for EMS, Williams said they were doing that without his knowledge.